This is section 10, letter C. There are 18 dreams in this segment that begins with the letter C. There are two dreams about camps, one dream about cannibalism, one dream about chaos, four dreams about cars, five dreams about churches, one dream about the city core building, one comet dream, one dream about cops, and three dreams about a corner store. The first number in this segment is the number one. This piece is called Section 10, One Chaos, Dream, or S101CAOD. In a month of March 27, 2010, I recorded this dream inside my dream book. Today I dreamt about a scary dream. The first thing I remember doing was that I was looking up into the sky. The sky was gray and the atmosphere around me was bathed in cautiousness. Then I found myself staring out through someone's brownstone ground floor window. I felt that I was somewhere in Bethel Stuyvesant. Maybe I might have been here on Halsey Street. I noticed a small amount of people outside the house I was in. The mob of people were standing on the sidewalk and in the streets. The mob consisted of black men, black women, and white men, and white women. The people outside wore casual wear. It was daytime. The mob had their attention focused upon the house I was in. Then I heard a woman's uh, voice saying something to me inside the brownstone. I turned around to face the woman who had just spoken to me from behind. This woman was a small black female. She won a dark colored shirt and she also won a pair of dark colored shorts. She now said to me, the people outside cannot see us. And I told her, I think they can. The window of this house had its vertical blinds open. The people outside were yelling, and they were very angry. Then a black man emerged from the crowd outside, and then this black person came inside the house. The lady and I were in. The man came into the house in order to assault, assault the small black woman behind me. She quickly realized he came into the house to have sex with her. The man, did sexual, the man did sexually assault the woman. Then she said out loud to me, I will give it to him. I think she believed that after she allowed him to have sex with her, he would then leave her alone. Then I stood there watching the man assault her. There was nothing I could have done to stop this, because she consented to it. Then the next thing I witnessed inside this dream was now I was in some kind of bar or some kind of restaurant. I seen white women seated upon stools or chairs. This place was poorly lit. There was a big mirror posted upon the wall which hanged behind the women. And then I noticed maybe two or three white men in front of these attracted women. The men strongly persuaded the women to eat ice cream. Then I witnessed all the women eat vanilla ice cream from metallic cups. Next, I decided to leave this place, and then I found myself inside an elevator with a white guy who appeared to be in his 30s. He had blonde hair, and he wore a black bag across his chest, and he, he also wore a dark blue jacket. He then pressed the elevator button for the 33rd floor. Then he also accidentally pressed the elevator button for the 28th floor. Then the elevator rolled up to the 28th floor first, and then the elevator door opened up and the man in the elevator quickly noticed two young-looking white men 
standing in front of this elevator. These individuals were on bright colored t-shirts. Then they said something to the man inside this elevator. I think these men were homosexuals who wanted to get to this man. But he quickly pressed the elevator button to close. Then the elevator door closed on their faces. Then I seen this person inside the elevator display disgust upon his face. The elevator now began to travel upward once again. Then I also left this scene. And the last place I found myself <clears throat> inside this room was now I was, I be, uh, now I believe I was inside the basement of this building that took the young, blonde-headed man to the 33rd floor. And I also believe this particular building might have been a mixed-use building that houses private rentals and commercial space. Then my eyes fell upon a white man riding a kind of forklift. This forklift had a shredder machine attached to it. This man driving this strange forklift appeared to also be in his 30s. He drove this forklift around the basement with no real direction. Then I noticed a tiger was loose inside this basement and the man with the forklift also spotted the tiger. The person behind the forklift approached uh, approached the tiger and he shredded the tiger into pieces. Some of the tiger's uh, body parts uh, splattered all over the place and upon my face. Then the man driving the forklift turned the shredder machine towards me. I tried to run but suddenly I soon discovered that my back was already up against a wall. The shredder dice, uh, the shredder device was risen up towards my face and then I felt heat, blade, and pressure exert upon my face and the rest of my body. Then I felt nothing anymore. I woke up from this dream and then I said to myself as I sat alone inside my room, I definitely must hurry up and get out of the city. I must go to Alaska for safety. Then I began to notice that this dream also came with a feeling that the four horsemen of the apocalypse were loose upon the earth. And that uh, the four horsemen of the apocalypse were doing things that the book of Revelation, uh, Revelation uh, uh, spoke about. Uh, taking peace from men, uh, men killed each other, and things like that. Okay, the next number in this segment is the number two. This piece is called Section 10, One Corner, Star Dream, or S101, CRND. In the month of March 31st, 2010, I recorded this dream inside my dream book. Today, I dreamt that I seen the corner store owner, uh, the owner of this store, uh, corner store is located on the corner of Holzer Street and Stuyvesant. But anyhow, this particular corner store was closed or out of business. It was daytime. Maybe it was also spring or summer. The weather outside was very nice. I got closer to look at the store. The store was abandoned and there were no windows in front of it. The front door was gone, I believe, and inside of the store were gutted out. Then I looked across the street and I seen a new store preparing to open up soon where Solomon Ports once used to be. This coming soon uh, store displayed on his front door something that had to do with juices, 